Good morning, I'm Rick Collins. In our last sessions of Shop Talk, we discussed port threads versus tube threads. We discussed uh, distinguishing characteristics, the differences between one thread uh, and another. Today we're going to put those together and we're going to come up uh, or leave you with the ability to identify accurately what type of thread you have. Uh, we have uh, six examples of fittings that we're going to go through step by step and identify each one. Uh, in order to identify threads, uh, you need an identification kit. They're commonly referred to as a metric identification kit, but that's not necessarily accurate because you can identify standard or imperial dimension threads with the kit. Here we have a basically an angle finder. It's going to tell you the degree of the flare. Uh, the next tool is going to be a set of calipers. Uh, they're in the 30 second scale. Uh, thread pitch gauges, both international and standard. You're going to have the book that helps put everything together. Uh, there's several pages in here that are very key to identifying threads. And finally the shadow board. And the shadow board would be used for threads that are measured nominally. And we'll get into nominal measurements shortly. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started on our first fitting. If you remember from our first uh, session of Shop Talk, we talked about uh, port threads and tapered threads uh, and ways to easily identify what you have. Well, if you'll notice here, we have an O-ring. Immediately that tells us that we have a port thread and it, it's parallel. Parallel threads seal on an O-ring. Port threads often have O-rings. So, first thing we're going to do is get the major outside diameter, the major outside dimension. You don't want to get that this way because you're actually going to come up with a slightly smaller measurement. You want to get the largest measurement you can get from the largest portion of the outside of the threads. In this case, we come up with one and a sixteenth. I realize that's very hard to see, but we have one and a sixteenth. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the thread pitch gauge that fits in closely. Uh, let's start with a sixteen. If you see here, the sixteen doesn't quite fit, but it's close. So let's go to a 14. Fourteen is even closer, but it's not quite there, so let's try a 12. And there you go. This is a one and a sixteenth 12. We know that it is a, again, a parallel thread. We know that it is now standard because it measures 1 and a 16th. So we're going to look in our booklet here and we're going to find 1 and a 16th 12. And what we have is a number 12 SAE O-ring boss. First one taken care of. Let's move on to the next one. This one, you can immediately see that it has a flare. So that tells us that that could be a 45 degree flared fitting, it could be a 37 degree flared fitting. So the way we're going to check that is we're going to take our flare gauge and we're going to see which one most closely fits. And you see how sloppy that is? This is not a 45 degree flare. So let's flip that around and use the 37 degree side of it. See how close and tight that fit, there's no gaps here, we know we have a 37 degree flare. That tells us that it's a JIC, JIC is flared at 37 degrees. So the next step we're going to make is measure the major outside dimension. And it is hard to see on the smaller calipers here, but we have one in five sixteenths. 
So our next step would be to find the thread pitch gauge that fits in nice and snug there with no gaps between the threads. And let's try the number 12 again. So what we come up with here is one and five sixteenths 12. Again, it's a 37 degree flare. So we're gonna look in our chart here. We're gonna find the 37 degree flared fitting. That is one and a five, one and five sixteenths 12. And that equates to a number 16 JIC. So we've identified that thread successfully. Here we have a, uh, a brass fitting. Uh, it is indeed a flared fitting. We're gonna take the angle finder there, 45 degree, fits nice and snug. There's no spaces, no gaps. We have a 45 degree flare. Next step would be measure the major outside dimension. And in this case, we come up with a one and a sixteenth. And then of course the next step is to find the thread pitch gauge that fits nice and snug. The 14 fits in there perfectly. No spaces, no gaps. And we go back to our chart. We look into the 45 degree flared fittings. And what we come up with is one and a sixteenth dash 14 is a number 12, uh, 45 degree flare fitting. All right, so let's move on to the next thread. In this case, we can see that it is a parallel thread. Uh, we're able to do that uh, pretty easily. There's no taper. Uh, also, one of the distinguishing characteristics of this uh, thread is there it's a soft seal or an o-ring it is encapsulated inside of a steel washer bspp is the type of thread that that uses this seal so we know it's a bspp thread on bspp threads the best way to measure those is to use the shadow board so we're going to lay this thread across and what you're trying to depict is an actual shadow that covers up the entire uh, yellow box. So in this case, we have a three quarter. Now just for an example, do you see how much uh, yellow is exposed there? Uh, it's definitely not a one inch. And let's go to a half inch. The threads actually lay over top of the half inch. So it, it's, it's clearly gonna be a three quarter inch. So we know that it's a three quarter inch. The next thing we want to do is we want to use our thread pitch gauge and determine the thread pitch. Okay, in this case I've got a, an 11. An 11 is uh, too, too large, it doesn't, doesn't quite fit. Here we have a 14, and the 14 fits nice and snug. So in this case, we have a 3 quarter 14 BSPP. And this part of the identification, uh, 14 threads per inch, uh, 3 quarter inch, we have 3 quarter BSPP. Next fitting we're going to look at. If you can almost immediately determine that that's a tapered thread, there's no soft seal, there's no O-ring, uh, you can see that this is cone shaped slightly. So that's going to tell us that this thread is clearly a, t a tapered thread and it could be either a BSPT or it could be an NPT. So now we need to determine which one of those it is. So again, we're gonna use our shatter board. We're gonna set it right over top of the yellow shading there. This too is a three quarter inch. 
we're going to find the corresponding thread pitch gauge. And the 14 fits perfectly. So we have a 3 quarter 14, which equates to a 3 quarter inch NPT, National Pipe Thread. The final fitting that we're going to go through today is a, is a metric fitting. And I've chosen this, this fitting intentionally because every thread that we've uh, discussed to this point is using a thread pitch gauge that is threads per inch. Uh, for example, this 12, there's 12 threads per inch. Uh, Fourteen, 14 threads per inch. The metrics, they identify or they, they call out the space between the threads. And the metric system in many ways is so much easier uh, in this case, there's three options for a metric thread. It's going to be 2.0, 1.5, and 1.0. Again, that is the distance between each thread, the crest of each thread. So the first thing we're going to do is measure the outside diameter, major outside diameter. And I come up with exactly 26 millimeters. Again, that's a little bit easier. Uh, we like the one and a sixteenth and one and five sixteenths. The metric system in many ways is, again, so much easier. And we have three uh, pitch finders, uh, for lack of a better term, to try to see which one fits the best. So we'll start with a 2.0. 2.0 .0 is, is, is very sloppy. It doesn't quite fit. Go to a 1.5. 1.5 fits nice and snug. So we have a M metric, 26 millimeter by 1.5. We go to our chart here. We find an M26 by 1.5. And that equates to an 18 millimeter metric. With that, I hope we've given you a good foundation to build from uh, in identifying uh, threads. Uh, again, the most important tools for identifying threads are going to be our identification kit. Uh, you're going to find those at uh, just about any hose and fitting shop and you'll find those at tool houses. I uh, appreciate your time today. Look forward to talking with you on our next session of Shop Talk.